Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. We'll be getting all kinds of Deadpool 3 reveals from Marvel, like we see Deadpool versus Wolverine in out because a big part of the movie is them bringing back all the classic X-Men actors to play versions of their characters again. Elizabeth Olsen also coming back as another version of her Scarlet Witch for some House of M Easter eggs. And as part of all this, it looks like we're actually going to get a full on Scarlet Witch versus Phoenix fight. <gasps> Whoa! Oh my god. Oh wow, 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 wow. So <laughs> what we crazy. have here is <laughs> For those of you who have always wondered who would win in a fight if they actually went up against each other, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're still in the middle of Secret Invasion episodes. That'll end pretty soon, but then we'll be getting Loki season three later this year too. So there's a bunch of big Marvel stuff coming up. A big part of Deadpool 3 will cross over with the events of Loki Season 2, but it'll be happening after the events of Loki Season 2. During the movie, Deadpool is using Cable's time travel device to jump around, cleaning up different timelines as he jokes about at the end of Deadpool 2, and that gets him on the TBA's prune list. Mobius, his agents, come after him. There'll be a bunch of TBA characters from the Loki series in Deadpool 3. And at some point in the movie, Deadpool is going to travel to a universe that's meant to be based on House of M in the comics, and he's also supposed to be visiting the 838 universe from Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. The rumor right now is that they're actually just going to say that the 838 universe winds up turning into a House of M universe. Like after the events of Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, 838 Wanda is left and eventually winds up using her chaos magic powers to go full House of M, but more of a reverse House of M, more of a situation where she helps Magneto, who is going to be her father in the 838 universe, completely take over that reality. So it's not exactly how House of M went down in the comics, but if you hear people saying that they're going to do House of M in Deadpool 3, that's what they're referring to. A universe, like the 838 universe, where Magneto winds up taking over the entire planet and mutants reign supreme. But it's all meant to be happening as a consequence of what happened at the end of Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Like they're just carrying the plot of that universe forward. This is the main version of Wolverine that Deadpool finds in the movie. He finds him in that 838 House of M universe and eventually wins him over to his side, mostly by wearing him down, as you can see. Like, they start the story in the movie together with Wolverine trying to claw his face off. It looks like they both get pruned together by the TVA and sent to the Void Planet from the Loki series, and the fight just drags on for so long because they have healing factors. Eventually, Wolverine just gets tired of it all, like, fine, whatever. You can even see him throwing Deadpool's severed arm back at him as he crashes through the 20th Century Fox logo. Like, the 20th Century Fox logo got pruned in some alternate universe, which is a bit of an Easter egg for Deadpool Kills, the Marvel Universe, but it's Deadpool Kills, the Fox Marvel Universe. So in the 838 House of M universe, Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch is supposed to be Ian McKellen Magneto's daughter. Oh, I'm gonna go with Sir Ian McKellen. I don't know if they're saying that she's biologically his daughter along with Quicksilver in the comics or if they'll just say that he thinks of her as his daughter and wants to protect her from everyone else that's trying to get revenge on her. All the surviving members of the Illuminati that we didn't see during Doctor Strange 2 want some revenge. Either way, that universe's version of Magneto with Ian McKellen coming back is protecting her from all the other heroes like the X-Men, Fantastic Four, all the Fox Marvel characters that we know they're bringing back from the older movies because it is a bit of a swan song for their characters like come back and cameo. One of the main classic X-Men they're bringing back is Fonka Jansen's version of Jean Grey who will get to go full Phoenix again, this time looking a little more comic booky. Remember, this is the 838 universe and we're doing a House of M inspired story. That's how we got the Wolverine yellow costume. Like in this universe, Professor X was a version based closer to the X-Men animated series version of the character. So all the characters will be wearing comic book costumes that are closer to the original comics. And it seems like at some point during the movie, they'll build up to a giant battle and it'll be kind of like X-Men 3 Last Stand, only with everybody trying to get Scarlet Witch instead of it being Phoenix. And it's during this big final fight that we'll get our Scarlet Witch versus Phoenix fight. So the big question that everybody's been wondering about for a long time, who is more powerful? Who would win in a fight? Both characters are meant to be S tier, like some of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe next to cosmic beings, actual gods, the one above all, like the one true god, Franklin Richards, the Beyonders, God Emperor Doom, Thanos with the full Infinity Gauntlet. Surprisingly, there haven't been that many Scarlet Witch versus Phoenix fights in the comics, and there haven't been any fights like this before. The last time Scarlet Witch fought Phoenix, it was actually Scarlet Witch versus Cyclops when the Phoenix Force had split and inhabited multiple characters at the same time, and she took him down quite easily, but he was only wielding a portion of the Phoenix's power, and it was meant to be a big House of M reference. 
This was years ago in the comics, but the way she took down Black Bolt and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness was very similar, taking them down with a whisper. When she was fighting Cyclops with the Phoenix Force, she whispered, no more Phoenix, and used her reality warping powers to get rid of the portion of the Phoenix in his body. The problem with this trick is that she's not powerful enough to pull that on the full Jean Grey Phoenix when she's using 100% of the Phoenix's power. Just to explain how each of their powers work, Scarlet Witch already has magic mutant based powers, like she's already a mutant without her chaos magic. The chaos magic doesn't make her a mutant. It's only meant to amplify her natural abilities to cosmic level. But even then, for instance, warping reality, she can only do that on a planetary scale. She can't control the entire universe at the same time. She can't control other universes. For instance, during Doctor Strange Multiverse of Magic, she had to use the Darkhold to take over the mind of the other Scarlet Witch. Like she couldn't cross the barrier physically between dimensions on her own. While mind walking into the other version of Scarlet Witch, she was able to use the chaos magic inside 838 Wanda, but that was about the limit of it. She couldn't warp the reality of that entire universe. The other thing about her chaos magic is that it's granted to her by Cthone, God of Chaos. She's not a god herself or the avatar of a god to make a Moon Knight reference. When she was born, Cthone gave her her chaos magic and he's manipulating her to help him re-enter the main Marvel Universe, but he still exists as a completely separate entity. He's one of the more powerful gods, like he's one of the elder gods, but he isn't inhabiting her body when she's using chaos magic. She doesn't become a god temporarily or anything like that. The difference with the Phoenix Force is that Jean Grey or any other character who becomes the Phoenix actually becomes a god. They are inhabited, like taken over by the god themselves. The Phoenix Force is immortal, indestructible, and immutable manifestation of the prime universal force of life. The way they characterize it in the Marvel Universe is like the spark that ignites all of creation and the flame that consumes it. So for instance, it's kind of like the Big Bang itself. The Shi'ar worship it as a god and believe that it's the sister of their two other gods who also predate the creation of the universe, but the other gods are really just pretending that they created the universe. There are a lot of gods in the Marvel Universe that pretend like they're the ones that are responsible for all the really major things that happen. Just to give you an idea of the power scaling though, like this god tier power scaling, one time the Shi'ar gods decided to destroy the entire universe and they called on the Phoenix to actually be able to pull it off. Like, okay Phoenix, you destroy the universe now. That's how powerful the Phoenix Force is. It can affect reality on a universal scale and the White Crown version of the Phoenix can also control all the other Phoenix Forces in every other universe without the need of something like the Darkhold. That version of the Phoenix is meant to be nigh omnipotent. Even the Living Tribunal, which is a multiversal being, is afraid of her in this form. So if you want to get technical about who's more powerful, if we're talking about the most powerful version of Scarlet Witch versus the most powerful version of the Phoenix, then the Phoenix would be more powerful. Now a lot of you are also wondering what would happen if Scarlet Witch became the host of the Phoenix Force? Wouldn't that be like the most top tier character ever? Technically the one above all would probably still be more powerful than them, maybe the Beyonders as well just because of the way they classify their powers. They've never actually done that in the comics though, but theoretically it's possible. The way they've talked about the Phoenix Force in Chaos Magic Scarlet Witch is more of a yin yang relationship. Two very extremely powerful cosmic forces. But early theory in Deadpool 3, if they're going to be doing a version of say like X-Men The Last Stand's final fight with everybody coming after Phoenix only at Scarlet Witch instead that they're trying to take down. What will probably wind up happening is that they'll pull a Vin Diesel versus The Rock. Like you have a situation where you have two incredibly popular, very powerful characters. How do you end the fight before one of them is actually declared the victor? So if they're actually going to riff on the end of X-Men The Last Stand, like a more comic booky version of that in the 838 universe, but based more on House of M type of reality, they might just wind up using something like the Mutant Cure, like some big twist like that to depower 838 Wanda and then just end the fight that way. Let me know though, they have a whole bunch of Fox Marvel cameos in the movie and you have Phoenix going up against Scarlet Witch. Who do you actually want them to kill off? Like there probably will be some hilarious deaths during the movie. This is Comic-Con week and even though Marvel isn't doing a big Hall H panel, DC isn't doing their big Hall H panel, there'll still be a bunch of big stuff dropping in the next couple of weeks. So I'll do videos for everything and we're still in the middle of our last couple of Secret Invasion episodes. So be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. My full Secret Invasion episode 5 video will post on Wednesday just like normal. Click here for that video, I'll update the link as soon as I post it and click here for that brand new Deadpool 3 Wolverine vs Deadpool video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next one.